Okay, I'm here with Skeeter Green, and we're going to talk a little bit about Rappanathic maps. And the reason we're talking about that is because very soon now, we have a pledge for some of the Rappanathic maps. <laughs> and so, what you see next to me, besides Skeeter's lovely face, is... I would um, be below you, as I am in all things. You know, this is why he's a project <laughs> manager for so many important projects. Um, anyway, so the maps are going to be going in a, like a slideshow, and you can see the quality of them and what we got. But uh, I'm going to start with saying that... Uh, one day, I was uh, swimming in a pool, and I was thinking about the new Rappanathic we were going to make, and I was thinking about the maps that were in the old Rappanathic, and uh, that turned into Skeeter's nightmare of being the project manager of this. So Skeeter, talk a little bit about um, the maps themselves and about the first Rappanathic maps and these and the difference. Absolutely. Um, so the first Rappanathic uh, originally was done in three small softbound books uh that was later compiled and that was right at the beginning of the 3.0 rule system that was later compiled into rap and Athic reloaded which was a box set and more levels were added which was then compiled again for the pathfinder role-playing game system and more levels were added um but what happened is maps just got reused. They, they weren't updated. They weren't changed. Uh, our original maps were done by Rick Sardina. And then um, the Pathfinder version, some of the maps that were added were done by Robert Altbauer. And they just stayed the same black and white, um, similarly detailed maps that we had from from the beginning and now that we're going to be releasing Rappanathic for the fifth edition of the world's most popular role-playing game that's Dungeons um, and Dragons in case you guys don't know uh no IP <laughs> infringement we can't use that word oh, uh, watch no. <laughs> <laughs> oh I'm sure Jeremy Crawford and Mike Merles are, are watching hanging on our every over, word <laughs> are are super concerned about what we're doing um but if they are, that would be awesome. I'm not going to lie. Hi, Jeremy. <laughs> Hi, guys. Um, no, it was time. Um, fifth edition, not to um, speak negatively about the Pathfinder or SNW crowd or what they get up to or whatever, but it really seems like um, the fifth edition crowd is embracing virtual tabletop more. Maybe because as older players, um, we don't have the time to get a group of people together. So a lot more is going into uh, virtual tabletop from, you know, Fantasy Grounds, Roll20. Um, I'm going to get in trouble for not mentioning like every other. D20 Pro. D20 Pro. You know, there are... There are a lot of companies doing some really cool stuff and it falls to us publishers to provide them with product uh, to incorporate in these games. And these maps are um, basically, you know, square one of us trying to do our part to grow the VTT community. And we're, really kind of stoked to be able to do it we have a couple of other things that we're we're going to build on but these maps are what we are going to start out with and these are all done by robert albauer and these are the jpeg maps and i'm going to throw to zach to talk a little bit about the maps we're offering for our VTT fans with the layering and things like that. Yeah, and uh, this is the best part um, to me is that Robert uh, is really cool in that he provided us not just with the JPEG maps of a player map and a GM map, but also the PSD file that includes uh, seven different layers so we can manipulate these maps so they can be useful in the uh, VTTs. So what we're talking about is like um, you have a layer with all the labels on it, you have a layer with a grid, you have a layer with um, the floor, a layer with like the special effects stuff like teleport locations and traps. Um, 
what that lets you do is uh, when you're setting up for, say, Roll20 as a GM, we will have the layers provided to you so you can do what you need and have the things you want to include on a layer. For instance, um, all the vegetation on the outside layers will be on one if you want. Um, and then the labels will be on one. And like secret rooms and secret areas, we're kind of leaving up to you to hide the way you want, depending on whether you have virtual light or various other things. And so giving the tools to GMs that is almost exactly what I use to make the maps for us um, from Robert's awesome maps. I'm not saying I'm a cartographer. I'm saying I'm a manipulator. <laughs> but um, giving the same thing to GMs who purchased these during the Kickstarter to be able to do all the things they want to see happen on a map with all the right tools, plus the um, providing just a player map and a GM map like we always have. And uh, we'll have a printed version of those in a folio as available. Um, but the highlight really is that the number of uh, awesome maps. And I wanted to say something. Skeeter, how many maps are we going to talk about? Just oh, GM maps. Oh, boy. Um, Not to pair. I, uh, Zach has been gracious enough to uh, provide me with an Excel spreadsheet that I haven't actually done a count on. I think my original uh, my original estimate was 120. So these are uh, 120 locations, for, right? Well, and <laughs> it gets a little bit weird about some of these because some of the smaller maps, like you're seeing right here, Wilderness Map Number Six, Coven of the Sea Hags, that one, and you know, the, uh, the wrecked pirate ship, some of these double up on one page. Um, but they are 120 something individual locations. One of the things that I was kind of leaving out to, uh, be talked about in the Rappanathic itself Kickstarter, but we'll talk about it in the maps. We're actually adding Rappanathic expansions to the 5e book. So all, most of the locations from that book are also being done as new maps and added in. And a little bird told me that there will be a new, um, additional brand new levels written by Bill Webb that they're going to go into the, uh, the 5e version of this with virtual tabletop maps. And those will be done as a separate POD or softbound book for Swords and Wizardry and Pathfinder as well. So at the, no end of, left out. at the end of this Kickstarter, everyone will have the opportunity to have everything that has been released for this. And the best part, I think, that uh, even if you're not a fan of Rap and Havoc, though you should be, um, is these are great, just basic dungeon maps that you can use for about anything, and there's 120 of them. And one, everything one from a ship things. to a town to a graveyard, <laughs> you know, you yeah. name it, it's huge, and they can be repurposed for any reason, and the maps themselves won't be that expensive for the number they are. Right. And that's one of the things um, we hear a lot. I have I have been involved with Rap and Ethic for... Um, I did... The, the Pathfinder conversion. I was the project manager for that. So I have six years in just since that one, um, a year of development before that. So seven plus the other one. So I've got almost a decade of talking to people at conventions and online and in different forums, how they've used rap and ethic. And um, while a lot of fans do just grind it out, um, <laughs> I mean, they, they go in and they <laughs> wrap an ethic is their campaign for one, two, three, you know, five years. And that's all they do. And uh, not for nothing, that would drive me insane. Uh, what <laughs> I have done is um, it's an excellent resource if you're doing uh, like hex crawls and you have, oh, here's a ruined dungeon. Well, geez, I didn't prepare anything for this ruined dungeon because I didn't expect you to do it. Flip through Rappanathic, grab a level, and just slot it in there. A lot of the levels, um, we have the old school 
uh, mega dungeon design philosophy that it doesn't have to make sense. You know, you, <laughs> there there could be purple worms in one thirty by thirty room, and you know, four bugbears in this cavern right next to it. You know, that's an exaggeration. See, we did, we did the a maps little right bit there. Than that. The maps right there, as you see them go by, I think you can picture what he means about you can pull these out and make them your own. And right. with the layers, you can add your own stuff. Um, the better you are at programs like GIMP or like, which is free, or Photoshop, um, the even better they get because we're giving you like the very basic tools to do it that Robert has provided us. So um, not just can you pull out from Rap and Ethic, you can just pull out the places and uh, make stuff happen. Right. So if you if you want to use GIMP or Photoshop or something and you want this waterfall room that we're showing right here, just crop that out and print it out and show your players and use that. We do ask that you don't use these maps for publication. We don't ask, actually. You, <laughs> um, right. We will, we will come after you. <laughs> but um, no, if you're using it in your game, please take this. Make it yours. You know, just imagine the hell out of it. I'm, exactly. I'm stealing that line from somebody. Yeah, that'd be Matt Finch. He won't, he won't know. Yeah, well, I had to give him credit. Um, anyway, <laughs> anyway so, so this, this will be, be coming, coming up pretty soon, soon like, like uh, weeks, weeks, not months. months. And so um, there'll be a little bit more about this as we go. I'm going to make a video fairly soon that will show an example of uh, how the layers work and a little bit about exporting. And then uh, you'll be seeing this soon. And uh, if you play VTTs, it's exciting. If you like rap and ethic, it's exciting. And if you like Skeeter, it's exciting too. So Something's you got it all. with you. Well, that, <laughs> I wasn't going to comment that part. I let oh, your fans on. speak for themselves. Oh boy. <laughs> anyway, so thank you everybody. I appreciate the time and uh, uh, I look forward to seeing you guys on the Kickstarter and on uh, various other projects. Uh, Rap and Avic 5e will be coming out next year and uh, it's going to be really awesome. Skeeter has some art that made me almost faint. So it's really good. And that is for this. Those are some of our exceptional stretch goals and we will be showing off some of the art that we already have um it's fantastic it is and we'll have a whole nother video about it because uh it really is that good <laughs> all right everybody thank you very much